remember King Midas, he had a gold mine at the tip of a finger. Everything he touched turned to gold. For instance, that golden statue in the corner, that was once his daughter. Yes, although it was a fabulous talent, it had its drawbacks. Ah, wonderful, catfish for dinner. But no sooner did he pick it up than the catfish became a goldfish. I've got it. I'll hire somebody to feed me. And so he was fed by Proxy, which was the name of his favorite servant. More problems, sire. Yes, if you please, Proxy. This relationship lasted almost one week, for on the seventh day, Proxy received his wages. What would you like, Proxy boy? A gold watch, gold tie pin? Pick it out. Proxy settled for a gold coin. He was smart, but not smart enough, for upon receiving his pay, he stuck out a hand to thank his employer. Uh-huh. Proxy became a fountain in King Midas' garden. Now, unknown to many people, myself included, King Midas had a son. My boy, why is it we never spend any time together? You think I want to wind up like sis? No, Dad. I think it's best that I leave home. Oblivious to his father's pleas, young Midas packed a suitcase, a golden one, naturally, and left the castle in a heavy coach. Heavy because it, too, had been turned to gold. The boy enrolled at a large university and majored in dentistry. Every so often, he would hear from his father. Who's the letter from? From my dad. How can you tell? The envelope. It's 14 carats. The boy studied hard and was so intent upon graduating, he failed to notice a change in himself. Anyone have a pencil? Here. He took the writing instrument and <coughs> it turned to gold. Not the best gold, mind you, but gold nonetheless. The darn thing won't write. Where you get this gold pencil from? Wasn't gold when I gave it to you. He shrugged it off and went back to his books. As you can see, he had inherited his father's golden touch. It began in small ways, like the pencil incident, but manifested itself on graduation day. You are not only our school valedictorian, but you got brains too, boy. It is with the utmost pride and honor that I hand you this scroll. Oh, thank you, Dean. The scroll changed to gold, and the Dean went that way too. Dean, speak to me. Oh, Dean, what's wrong? Oh, Dean, you look dizzy, Dean. Aware of his dreadful legacy, but still a dentist at heart, the sorrowful young man opened up an office and went into business. Brushed him twice a year, eh? That's what I'd say. Oh, by the way, who put all those gold teeth in for you? What gold teeth? Horror of horrors, he had unknowingly transformed all the man's teeth into gold. In fact, it wasn't long before all his patients were likewise equipped. All I wanted was an extraction, not a gold mine. My boy, it's good to see you again. How can you say that after what you've done to me? What have I done? What have I done? Where have I gone wrong? You have created a finster. You mean monster. I know a guy named Finster who's a monster. They had a father and son discussion during which the boy displayed his prowess by turning various things into gold. And now I have a good mind to touch you. Oh, dear dad. You do that to your own father? Well... You did this to me, your son. King Midas spoiled what might have been a golden opportunity by talking his offspring into visiting an old witch who lived on a hill. Go away. I have a spell to get out by noon. But my dad said you would be golden. Touch me. Oh, very well. Sit in the chair and I'll be right with you. The only chair in the room was a genuine Louis XIV, the witch's pride and joy. He touched one arm. The chair was transformed into gold and because of its sudden gaining of weight... Lunge through the floor. Why, you little... Oh, I tell you, an angry witch is the worst kind. So the son wasted no time in beating a hasty retreat. <laughs> if I ever lay my hands on you! Returning to his dentist's office, the crestfallen lad pondered his fate. That's when a voice spoke from the chair. I should like a gold filling, young man. Sir, if I so much as touch one tooth, your entire set of teeth will turn to gold. That's fine by me, Jack, and in return, I shall tell you how to solve all your problems. How do you know about my problems? I've been listening to the story. Oh! He went to work, which simply meant that he touched one molar. There you are. You now have a mouth full of gold. Wonderful, wonderful. Now listen closely. Here is how you can put your golden touch to good use. The dental office has been for rent for many, many years. You see, the boy took the stranger's advice and got out of dentistry altogether. What did he go into? Well, that's his place of business there, that little shop beside the river with the sign that says, Junior Midas, Locksmith. But I don't understand. What does a golden touch have to do with being a locksmith? What's the matter? You never heard of Goldilocks. Don't.